Hello my friends and welcome to the finals of GP Kyoto. I'm Riley Knight and I'm in the booth by, joined by the Hall of Famer Dr. Frank Carsten all the way from the Netherlands and I tell you what Frank, things are heating up in a major way down in the feature match area because it is all coming down to this final match between Atsuki Kihara and William Jensen. William Jensen finishing fifth the Hall of Famer and Atsuki Kihara he has drafted his way to the top tables and is hunting for that GP gold here and uh, both of these players off to similar starts. Ru and Rat's going to trade off here. Uh, <laughs> yep. uh, Frank Carson already got across the fact that m neither of these gre uh, decks are looking to be super aggressive here. Indeed. Uh, well, a 1-1 one, one dead touch for two mana is already uh, an indication that uh, none of these decks are going to be attacking for a ton of damage early on. Obelisk Spider, same deal. And yeah, William Jensen's deck is uh, more of a green-black mid-range style deck, mm -hmm. focusing around cards like uh, Oasis Ritualist uh, to ramp into uh, Rampaging Hippo, uh, rather than uh, hyper-aggressive two-drops. Uh, in the meantime, Atsuki Kihara's deck, uh, it's, uh, it's a blue-black deck. Blue-black never really known for its uh, fast attacks. Bunch of uh, cheap creatures that uh, affect the board, like Ruin Red, but nothing that attacks for a bunch. Kihara is mainly relying on uh, the power of his rares, Rex the Riches, Hour of Eternity, Torment of Hellfire. His late game is quite stellar. We see Torment of Hellfire there in the hands of Kihara, and Jensen will, will have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these cards because he is also looking to get to the late game. Very, very powerful synergies in William Jensen's decks. Archfear of Ifnir uh, has, uh, has really done some work for him in previous games in the semi-finals where he absolutely took apart John Finkel, the greatest of all time, of course. He took him, ripped him apart from limb from limb, really, off the back of uh, these synergistic minus one, minus one counterplays. But to look, Jensen's on the hunt here. He is, oh, he can smell it. He is uh, chasing a back-to-back -back title because, of course, he won with a Peach Garden Oath recently uh, in the most recent GP, the team event. Yep. Oh, and speaking of smelling, uh, Jensen must have smelled uh, even Reed Stalker. That must have been the reason why he didn't attack with the Obelisk Spider, mm. Mm. keeping it back as a blocker, more likely. But... Uh, Kihara like actually had nothing. So far, this is uh, a completely different game than some of the other ones we've seen so far. Uh, both players still at 19 or 20. Not uh, There's three power on the board in total mm. uh, on both sides combined. This is turn, uh, turn five. Not a lot has been uh, happening so far. So in the beginning, I was wondering, is this going to be an aggressive format or not? Looking at the decks in this finals, Blocking is certainly possible in this format. Yes, indeed, as we see a uh, Oasis, Oasis Ritualist joined now by a Nimble Obstructionist here. And we're going to see an attack. This is a very suspicious, highly <laughs> suspicious, highly suspicious attack here from Kihara, considering yes, that indeed. the Spiderino has blo has uh, reach here. And uh, Kihara's come prepared for ah, it. Ah, that works. So Obelisk Spider would uh, dish out additional minus one, minus one counters if it deals damage, but its power is just uh, shrunk, so yeah. that's not even going to do anything. Splendid Agony, a nice way to keep the lid on things here and keep that nimble obstructionist around. We don't often see it cycled in limited, but a 3-1 flash beater in the air, I mean, yeah. Pretty good stats for the for the cost you're, uh, mm -hmm. you're paying for it. Spell Weaver Eternal coming down. We mentioned the fact that Takihara does have a little bit of uh, uh, aggressive uh, potential with cards like this. Yeah, once we get to the to the mid to late game, but oh, oh this my is goodness, big. this is a stone cold two for one. William Jensen uh, getting maximum value out of this splendid agony, and splendid is the word here because Kihara's just had his board uh, torn to shreds as Jensen follows it up with a wretched camel. No deserts to speak of just yet, so just a two one here. Yeah, card advantage, tempo advantage. That was that was just huge for uh, Jensen, and it shows that uh, one toughness is still quite a liability in this format. And here comes the big snaky here. It's time for uh, Jensen to wake up and uh, smell the roses because this 5-5 five five is going to do some business. Kihara only needs one more card in his graveyard for it to start attacking. You can see that that Ruin Rat has been exiled, exiled to the previous Ruin Rat cast <laughs> by William Jensen. Corey Hauler going to get rid of this minus one, minus one counter on the Oasis Ritualist. So Jensen's developing his board, but a 5-5 five is no joke, Frank Carsten. Yep, and as you mentioned, only one more card uh, has to go into the graveyard. Then again... Uh, if Kihara would be able to attack with it here, Jensen has a, has a reasonable double block with, uh, let's say, Oasis Ritualist and Quarry Hauler. In that case, the 5-5 five five would trade for the 4-3, which is not exactly favorable for Kihara. So we may be uh, heading into a more old-fashioned board stall, because 
you know, in combat, it still favors the, the defender. Yeah, this is something you've mentioned a couple of times, Frank, and, and, and I think given the fact that we have characterized this format as one where you do want to be attacking, there's still a lot to be said for, for setting up uh, defensive plays, uh, using combat tricks uh, cleverly in combat to preserve your life total, to preserve your board position, and uh, this has been the name of the game. I mean, both of these decks aren't blazing fast decks. We've seen people maneuver themselves into very, very canny positions uh, based on clever uh, use of the combat step, and it hasn't just been focused around attacking. Indeed. There, although there are a lot of cards in this format that get better when you're mm. attacking, with abilities like... Um, uh, well, Afflict, well, obviously, the most Afflict obvious one. Afflict is one, which is on the, the Spellweaver, Eternal, but also uh, Exert, or cards mm -hmm. that only care about attacking creatures. Even like uh, Thorn Moloch, for sure, yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, there are not many of them uh, on this side of the table. Looks like uh, neither player really emphasized those types of cards during right. the draft, rather going for cards that are also fine at blocking. Lethal Sting coming down to take care of this Oasis Ritualist. Jensen's taken to the skies as well. He's got a bone picker out. He paid full retail for it, however. So Lethal Sting turning the River Serpent into a 4-4. Jensen having a look at exactly what this card's going to do. If all goes to plan for Kihari, it'll just uh, destroy that Oasis Ritualist. Nice, nice clean removal spell for three mana. Of course, does come mm -hmm. with an, an the downside. Yeah, it, on the one hand, it feels a bit uh, surprising that uh, Kihara is targeting the Ritualist rather than the Bone Picker because, well, the Bone Picker, it's uh, a powerful flyer, would also have that touch, so it trades for the River Serpent uh, whenever you want. What Kihara might be thinking is, hey, it's possible that uh, Jensen has, uh, well, I was going to say Sifter Worm in hand, so he might need the mana. Looks like the Ritualist is going to, well, survive in a way. Supernatural stamina coming yep. down to uh, to take care of business here for William Jensen. It means that uh, it, it, when it dies, it re returns to the battlefield. So now Kihara could attack. The Spellweaver Eternal is 3-2, but it will still trade for the Wretched Camel. The the Serpent could attack, but that may just trade for, well, either Quarry Hauler or Bone Picker now. You, know, you would just give uh, Jensen some uh, some options. No point in doing that yet. Getting in for three here. William Jensen taking to the skies again on the back of this bone picker. And here's a big play. It's five mana. It's at the Ooh. Arch Fiend of Ifnir. So this is going to turn the game around here for Jensen because this card, in addition to the Cyclist, which he's got in his deck, he's got Hippos, he's got other things going on as well to put these minus one, minus one counters on Kihara's deck. And there you see it on your screen. This card, what a house, Frank Carsten. Yeah, it's probably the best card in Jensen's deck. He even played... Uh Two copies of Scarab Feast, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a poor card in general, but uh, an excellent way to trigger Arc Fiend of, uh, of Ifnir. Um, so, an excellent addition to the board. But this game is still far from over because Kihara, he's holding two of his X spells. He has both Hour of Eternity, uh, although he, what does he have in the graveyard? Nimble Obstructionist, and that's pretty much it, yeah. it uh, mm -hmm. looks like. Um, but also the Torment of Hailfire. Currently, he uh, would be able to cast it for Axis 6, if he likes. So that's uh, six times, well, opponent either losing three life or a card from hand or a non-land permanent. Uh, that's not too bad. In comes a 4-4 River Serpent here. Yeah, with the Hour of Eternity uh, in hand, it definitely makes sense to, uh, well, try to get some creatures into the graveyard so you can turn them into Eternals. Yeah, he's happy enough to get them away because the Hour of Eternity could really be uh, something that completely breaks open this game for Kihara. He's going to want to get maximum value out of it. This is a card you want to cast for where X equals, you know, two at the minimum, three and, or, and upwards, uh, potentially. Well, he's not going for it yet. It's not like Kihara has all the time in the world, right? Jensen uh, has already, well, it's uh, eight power in the air with the Archfiend of Ifnir and the Bone Picker. Uh, so that would already be a two-turn clock. So Jensen now, considering his options, Kihara sitting, cool as ice. There is the Hour of Eternity. It'll be interesting to see if this one is brought to bear. An immensely powerful card, but I know it's raised some eyebrows, Frank Carsten. Not everyone's sold on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a little slow. Um, if, uh, if you don't have great creatures to get back with relevant abilities, it's... It's, a, it's just medium when you mm. cast it for 5 mana. For 7 mana, yeah, you're starting to get there, but still not super exciting. And, and the triple blue cost also a bit difficult, but uh, it makes copies. So if you get back a creature with flying, that's yeah. suddenly uh, an air elemental rather than a Dirkwood Bors. That can be, that can be quite important. 
Kihara now facing a bit of an onslaught from Jensen. He looks like he's going to try to tie up some blocks here, but uh, he's taking a bit of a bit of a shellacking from uh, uh, William Jensen here. Three creatures getting across unblocked, and uh, that's a pretty mighty hit, Frank. It is down to six life oh already. Dear. Kihara oh dear. does have the option of going land Hour of Eternity for Axis 3 on the next turn. And there's the Nimble Obstructionist, which would retain flying, giving him uh, a reasonable blocker in the process. And here is the Hour of Eternity indeed, just as you, uh, just as you said, Frank, and we're tapping out here. So this is a huge Hour of Eternity. Uh, of course, the uh, still needing to find a way to, uh, to deal with this board that uh, Jensen has, uh, has cobbled together here. But I tell you what, he started off in a just an absolutely brilliant way here. Uh, he is using his life total definitely as uh, as a resource. Mm -hmm. He could have cast the the hour last turn for Axis Two. Uh, chose not to. Took a lot of damage in the process, yeah. and we'll we'll have to see whether or not that will come back to uh, to bite him because yeah, six life points. It's not a lot to uh, to work with, and he only has one flyer to deal with the Arc Fiend and the Bone Picker. Now you made an important point here, uh, Frank. So all of these creatures are technically in the exile zone. We're using them mm -hmm. as uh, to represent the tokens that have been created here. And an important point you made, of course, is that they still have the original abilities of the cards themselves. That means that the Spellweaver Eternal does have a flick. It means that the Nimble Obstructionist also has flying, and it means that the River Serpent has a Stone Cold Nothing. But it is it's actually been downgraded to a four-four <laughs> here as it's as it's come back from the grave rolled away at stone and uh, got up to the battlefield once again looks like jensen is uh, interested in shrinking them even further this is the one of two copies of scarab feast yep uh, a weak card all in all but mm -hmm. uh, when it suddenly puts minus one minus one counters on the other side of the board and draw a card in the process well it becomes pretty good so this is also important because now kihara is not able to uh, trade his uh, four four nimble obstructionist for arc of ifnir although i have to wonder why William Jensen chose to cycle it in the main phase. Maybe he was trying to uh, draw into another relevant sorcery speed card. We saw the top of William Jensen's deck treat him very kindly in the semi-finals when he ripped uh, consecutive cycling cards to absolutely tear John Finkel's board to pieces. And in a similar way here, he's really putting the screws on Kihara with another all-out attack. Kihara has his work cut out for him. He has to make these blocks here. He has to survive this combat step because uh, Jensen mm -hmm. just continues to push further and further forward. Uh, well, the the flyer it could uh, well it could block the bone picker and uh, and trade does go for a jump for the arc fiend, the grizzly survivor because of the cycling is uh, four power as well, so that'll trade and the oasis ritualist turned into a uh, a four six thanks to the resilient uh, Kendra. No wait, uh, never mind. Uh, that was still uh, a two. Four bouncing against the tree tree, mm -hmm. and Jensen chose to uh, pump his uh, his other flyer, the bone picker, and that actually uh, makes a lot of sense because then Kihara could not use his flyer to trade for any of the the flyers. So, so Kihara down to one, Jensen on twenty. Yeah, and this is the point where the Torment of Hailfire is not as impressive because mm -hmm. Kihara he could play land and then Torment of Hailfire for. Let's see, it was about uh, eight or so, but yeah, Yui could just yeah. uh, lose life, mm. maybe maybe six uh, times or so even, sacrifice a creature, discard a card, and then swing back on the next turn. So William Jensen tidily picking up game number one. He'd be very happy with that. Off to a strong start. Atsuki Kihara, however, he doesn't want to be the final boss of Japanese GPs. He's going to want to get over the top here mm -hmm. and take the Hall of Famer to account. And uh, William Jensen, I mean, he got, he got, a, he got a good look at, uh, at uh, Atsuki Kihara's deck. He, he is going to know what he's facing moving forward. And that may influence his sideboard plans already. Frank Carsten, I can see him uh, fiddly, uh, fiddling around with some of the cards in his deck. So he's looking to make some changes into the sideboard. This is something that I think is an overlooked part of, li of limited gameplay. Uh, that is true. Uh, it's it's more a factor in sealed deck, I believe, when okay. you just have a larger card pool than in uh, than in draft. But uh, sideboarding is always uh, accessible uh, to you, and there are always small changes that you can uh, can make. For example, in the semifinals, uh, William Jensen boarded a nest of scarabs yeah. against uh, John Finkel. And proved to be devastating. Uh, yeah, and that, that's a, an enchantment. Yeah, you might be putting it in here as well. It certainly looked uh, like it. It's an enchantment that's not going to be great when you're playing against, let's say, a hyper-aggressive mm. red-white deck. You likely just would have the time to uh, find other minus one, minus one counters and get some uh, value out of it. But uh, against a deck like Kihara's, which doesn't uh, appear to be blazingly fast, uh, you might have enough time 
to assemble Nest of Scarabs with some other minus one, minus one counter effects. And then you can really put uh, it to good use in the long game. I mean, we saw stuff like Splendid Agony. We saw stuff like uh, Torment of Venom coming out of uh, Jensen's deck as well. So the, the Arcfiend of Ifnir, that, that's the dream. Absolutely. I mean, and he lived, he lived that dream as well. He turned it into a waking nightmare for Finkel in, uh, in, in the semi-finals. But uh, right now, he does have another game to win against Tsuki Kihara, who is also looking to make some adjustments for his deck. I have to say, this guy has really impressed me with his drafting. Kihara, I think uh, we, we've already touched upon the blue-black deck that he drafted in, uh, in the final rounds of the Swiss. But, uh, I mean, do yourself a favour around the world, wherever you are, jump back to the Twitch replays and have a look at it, Frank, because we were beside ourselves. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, we were just wondering, what's he going towards? Mm -hmm. He's just cycling every card that he sees. Every single card. Uh, he wasn't casting anything, just cycling them all. Yeah, and then at some point he had three lands in hand, so so now what? And then there was the abandoned sarcophagus. It was beautiful. It was just insane. So really, get amongst yeah. that. You, you're going to want to get across it. Uh, and uh, Frank, it's kind of opened... I mean, this isn't the only example. It's just one example of, of the way that this weekend has really opened up my perspective, at least, and I'm sure for many people around the world as well. Just the depth, the intricacies involved in drafting this format. Uh, it's It's been an absolute masterclass from the best players in the world as to how to approach this limited format and uh, a bit of a crucible for those heading into the Pro Tour next weekend. You're amongst these people, Frank. What are some of the lessons that, uh, that you've taken away from this event that uh, you'll be brought to bear next week? Well, one lesson is uh, if you draft green, then uh, draft uh, a slower deck. Don't go for the aggressive green uh, strategies. If you look at the deck that William Jensen is playing now, but also the deck that uh, John Finkel drafted, it was way more of a, let's say, an Oasis Ritualist mm -hmm. into a Rampaging Hippo type deck. Rather than so, the sort uh, of uh, Ronus a Stalwart into, uh, into Overcome hooded, hooded or, Brawler or whatever, yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. Exactly. And that was... Uh, Further solidified by uh, a pick that Martin Muller, who, uh, who actually also oh, made it to the, yeah. the top four here, yeah. uh, here made earlier. This was bonkers. Today. Couldn't believe this. Yeah, it was uh, first pick, uh, the Even of Enduring Hope, three, three above, flyer above, above Overcome. Overcome, ridiculous stuff. But Martin Muller, I mean, he was on a tear. We got to check in with him as mm -hmm. well because at 13 and zero, he's had a great weekend. Locked himself up with platinum. He's going to yep. make a run at the World Championship as well. Really, one of the uh, the strongest performing players in the Swiss. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was running around with my pants down. I couldn't. I couldn't understand why he would take a, a five mana three three flyer, but he was rewarded for it. He went mm. undefeated with that deck, and and he knew what color Perry wanted to be, and he had a very clear idea of the way that he wanted the format to shake out. And it's fascinating for me. It's fascinating for me on the sidelines to watch the way that these these professional magicians, after weeks of hermetically sealed testing, come and, and bring these strategies to bear on the wider world. So much for us to learn, Frank. Absolutely. He just didn't feel comfortable with the green aggressive decks. And this is also something that I enjoy about this current format. You not only have these uh, 10 different color combinations, hmm. but even within a color combination, uh, you can draft decks in widely different ways. Yeah, that's very true. Um, like as we saw with green aggro decks versus more green ramp, big, uh, big hippo uh, mm -hmm. decks, uh, Kihara going from a blue-black cycling deck towards just a blue-black you know, creature, flyer, good card uh, deck. Uh, we've seen, uh, well, red-white mainly still aggressive, but mm. uh, sometimes you uh, get all of the, the controlling cards and make something uh, different out of it. Uh, there is a lot of depth. And we haven't even touched on all the, the desert synergies. Oh, geez, yeah. We've, well, we've been talking about this over the weekend. The deserts have just been so, so impressive. And maybe we'll get a chance to chat about them later on because right now we are up to game number two, potentially the final game here. If Jensen can take it across the line, of course, Kihara will be doing everything he can to prevent that from happening. But here we are, a desert of the glorified coming down on turn number one for Kihara. And he's off to the races now with a ruin rat. Once again. And Jensen, does he have the rat of his own? He does not. Passes the turn back to Kihara, who's in for one. Kihara has all the rats this game. Hmm. There's another one in his hands. Rat tribal yeah. here now. But it's going to be a grizzly survivor. So uh, Kihara curving out nicely. What's Jensen's answer to this? He's got to have something, but he doesn't. Passing the turn on uh, on turn two here. On turn three, I should say, after playing his third land. Now, it looks like Jensen kept a bit of a slow hand, but... Uh Typically, that would still be fine against the deck that Kihara has. And Kihara's oh. going to be able to curve out here. I see a lurching rot beast in his hand as he All right. chips away at William Jensen here. And he's just gone 2, 3, 4. And this is how you win games are limited, uh, Frank Carsten, especially mm. when your uh, opponent is just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Yeah. Jensen is stumbling uh, a little bit, not hitting his curve. Already on the draw, so then you're behind... Uh, uh, by a bit already. Oasis Ritualist isn't going to do too much to stem the bleeding as well. A single cycling card is going to mean that Asuka Kihara is able to attack more or less without any uh, too many worries here. 
Well, the Ritualist can still trade for the Lurking Rod Beast. That would be uh, a one for one trade, one four drop for another four drop. Uh, I don't think Jensen wants to be blocking the Grizzly Survivor. That makes no sense. So we are going to see a block snapped off here. That's not what yep. where Jensen wants to be. He needs that mana. He needs to push himself into the late game. Kihara is out of the gates like a bloody greyhound here. Yep, but uh, his deck is not always set up to uh, to amplify such fast starts. Look in his hand, for instance. Mm. There's a uh, Rex to Riches. Give minus two, minus two to all the creatures. Okay. <laughs> That's not something yep. he wants yeah, to be casting I, I, anytime I, I, soon. It's I'd always that. a dead card. Uh, but just a Ruin Rat and then a Nimble Obstructionist, that might be good enough by itself even with, uh, well, effectively a blank in hand. So some early pressure from Kihara, let's see if he can sustain it. Quarry Hauler coming down now. So Jensen adding to the board. And a Nimble Obstructionist means that Kihara can keep the pressure up. Yep. These Ruin Rats more or less indestructible, oh, sorry, unblockable at this stage. They can get in knowing that they're only going to make a favourable trade here. Looks like Ihara is considering to uh, attack with the Grizzly Survivors as well. Uh, that would be somewhat aggressive because Jensen is already behind on life total. Might yeah. be poised to block it with Cory Haller. And Kihara is not uh, making such a mistake. Cunning survivor. So we do see a little bit of cycling going on with Kihara's deck. Jensen, he needs something like a Splendid Agony. He needs a way to clear out these, uh, these creatures here. Ideally, of course... <clears throat> Excuse me. Ideally, it would be an Archfiend of Ifnir into a cycling card. That would clean things up we nicely guess, here. That, that would be completely insane. Yeah. But it's just a Bone Picker, which is okay. It'll trade for the Nimble Obstructionist. Bit of a Picarino here for Jensen as he continues to try to stabilize. But Kihara is really getting amongst it and uh, mm. kicking goals with both feet here. Tragic lesson. A little surprised that he didn't tap uh, the Desert instead of the, the Swamp. So he can return <coughs> that one and then potentially cycle it after. But he's actually just uh, discarding to indeed yeah. trigger both of his creatures. Yeah, and he's done, uh, he's done well to do it here as Jensen lines up his blocks. Happy to dis discard a card given that it puts three extra power on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. That'll do. He's taking four here, down to four is Jensen. Uh, Jensen still may have a trick up his uh, sleeve. No, no, he no. does not. Away they go here, so... Jensen needs this Archfiend. He needs a way to clear these uh, creatures out. A riddle form coming down for Kihara. That's resistant to the uh, to the Archfiend, although it, it does obviously get blocked by the 5-4. Yep. Ugh, and a just a cycle. Cycling here for Jensen. Uh -huh. He wants to do this after he's played his Demon. What can he find here? Well, he has plenty of good cards in his deck. Sifter Room would be big. Ooh, oh, off th the there top. Is the ripping hot, hot pepperoni off the top of his library here, William Jensen. And if he has the Feast of Scarabs afterwards, then he is in business. We'll see if this Archfiend of Ifnir is going to bring its considerable impact to bear on this game. Or is it too late, Frank? Uh, it depends. If he doesn't have a Cycler uh, to go with it, then uh, Kihara can still attack with the Ruin Red. Jensen will not be interested in blocking them with his Archfiend. But then Jensen would fall down to two life still facing all of these Ruin Rats. Mm. Um, he's ahead on board, thanks to the Arc Fiend, but his life total is uh, getting really, really low. It is perilously low, yes, yep. you have to say. And a Splendid Agony on the Arch Fiend too. Oh, that will uh, trigger the Riddle for him. Yeah, this is looking very, very bad here for Jensen. Yep, so now Jensen basically has to block the Riddle for him to survive. And but thanks to the counters, it will uh, it will just trade for the Arc Fiend. Does he have a one-mana Cycler? Now is the last chance for him to deploy it here. He's giving us the slow roll. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is just uh, in slow motion here. There's Jensen. Oh, if he blocks like this, then he certainly has, uh, has a side. He card. must have it. There it is. Okay, so oh, this, wow. uh, this game, we're back at it now as the riddle form gets a minus one, minus one counter in addition uh, to the old uh, cunning survivor here. That is such a big, uh, yeah. big play. It's it's the difference between probably winning and losing this uh, this game. Absolutely. That that was really spelling game over here for Jensen, but he's able to pull it together. He's going to take two in the air thanks to the riddle form, but uh, still managing to maneuver himself with this arch fiend on the battlefield. And this is, I mean, this is his way out. Yeah. This is. is his rope ladder off the side of the helicopter here. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that uh, the arch fiend is going to live through the encounter with the cunning survivor. Um, and well, fall down to two life, but uh, now Jensen is uh, is firmly ahead. He'll and have uh, a blocker for the riddle form in the arc fiend. Has plenty of cards in hand, whereas Kihara seems to be uh, a bit out of gas. Has access to the scry on the riddle form, but 
Jensen ahead this game. Yeah, Jensen has is, uh, is really solidified his position here. Of course, you can see the riddle form still with the minus one, minus one counter on it, yep. even though it's no longer a creature. That counter sticks around, and here is the nest of scarabs. Mm -hmm. This means that uh, now uh, Jensen's going to be able to flood the board with scarabs if he's able to continue to get Archfiend triggers off here. And Kihara now with his work cut out for him. Jensen with a full hand. Nice big fat ham sandwich in his hand, whereas Kihara is looking at a boarding house scrape of butter across a bit of Wonder White here. So remember that Kihara still has the Rex to Riches in hand, uh, which uh, would be able to... Is it uh, in? I feel like he discounted it earlier to the, the uh, oh, tragic did. lesson. Well, in that case, he doesn't have uh, access to it to deal with uh, the Arc Fiend. No, not quite. I mean, one more land and he'll be able land to... Land and he can gain control of it, potentially. But yeah. you'd think that Jensen would have added something else to the board by this stage. Rich is, is one of the least potent mind of mind control effects, <laughs> uh, Frank. As, as, mm. as we both know, of course, it uh, essentially gives your opponent the choice of which card they gain control of. So, of course, you're always getting the biggest Dudski on the battlefield here. And indeed, Jensen is going to continue playing here. It looks like uh, uh, the Kendra is going to come down, boost up the Archfiend, which gets in. So Jensen now on the attack. Yep, and of course, Jensen knows that there is still this Torment of Hailfire in uh, Kihara's deck, mm. so he doesn't want to give him all that much time to draw into it. He needs to start attacking and pressuring Kihara's life total to just reduce the number of draws that... Uh, Kihara has access to. See a scry from Kihara now. He draws the card off the top of his library and says, go. And Jensen's going to get to untap once again. I mean, I thought, you know, he, he looked like he was down for the count earlier. Kihara curved out, two, three, four, get in there, le left, right, good night. But uh, Jensen's still up and, uh, and, and, and chucking punches around like a pro here. Yep, still alive at two life. And just That's getting in there. Look at this. I love this aggressive posture. I would also expect, though, that uh, Jensen has some kind of uh, removal spell mm -hmm. in have case so. Kihara finds a way to animate his, uh, his riddle form. Or perhaps a cycler. A cycler is also enough to uh, make sure that it only attacks for one. This perplexes me, Frank. This perplexes me because uh, Riddle Form scryed in Kihara's upkeep, mm -hmm. and he kept, allow kept the card on top, drew it, mm -hmm. and then did nothing. He scryed again for another three mana. Well, what has he kept on top here? It's uh, possible that it's just an expensive card, uh, which he couldn't cast for three mana. Uh, as we mentioned, he has all kinds of uh, powerful spells in his deck, Torment of Hailfire, and he might actually have that in hand right now. Oh, uh, yes, he, he does. does. Maybe that was the card yep. that he scribed at the top, knowing he's going to get some use out of it. But just perplexing for me that uh, Kihara is so, so close to victory here. I mean, he, he knows that probably uh, Jensen is sandbagging a removal spell for this riddle form. Otherwise, we wouldn't see these aggressive attacks coming through. Mm -hmm. So what would the Torment of Hailfire do? Uh, currently, Kihara can cast it for Axis 4. Uh, William Jensen certainly cannot choose to uh, lose 3 life. So William Jensen would have to, to either discard uh, some cards or sacrifice non-land permanents. Mm. He has the option of sacrificing Nets of Scarabs, if he so pleases. And sacrificing the... Uh, the Kenra, the Eternalized creature, is also mm. not that bad. So, at the moment, Jensen has uh, a good way around it. Won't lose immediately to the to the Torment, unless he doesn't have an answer for the riddle form, that is. Well, look at this. Here is the Torment of Hailfire. So, Jensen now. And he also has to deal with, as you mentioned, the riddle form, which comes mm -hmm. alive because of this Torment here. Yeah, I think it's even more uh, dangerous than uh, the Torment itself. But here is the Torment of, uh, torment of Venom. Targeting his own resilient Kenra? Alright, so I guess then Kihara did uh, uh, did not animate his uh, riddle form, choose not to do that. But right. one way or another, this tournament is gonna put some minus one, minus one counters, which will uh, give tokens with Nest of Scarabs, which he can then sacrifice to the torment. And it also handily puts this eternalized creature in the bin, but Jensen also forced to discard his final card you know, one of his cards in hand, I should say, uh, the Oasis Ritualist here. He cannot lose life. He has to no. discard cards or um, or sacrifice permanence here. But and those those little bug skis are definitely going to help him uh, meet that uh, meet his quota for this quarter here. But that's fine. Yeah, if Kihara knew that uh, Jensen had Torment of Venom uh, there and the, the 
deck lists of the of the pools that were drafted were exchanged mm. beforehand. It not makes a lot of sense not to animate it in that uh, spot. So good heads up play by Kihara there. Yeah, I'm really impressed by that prescience there because uh, it's not a must ability. You don't have to turn it into a creature here. But there's going to be enough, uh, I think. The Kenra coming back from the graveyard giving plus four, plus four. And that'll do it. We have a new GP champion. William Jensen wins back to back after one of the most incredible plays you're ever going to see. Torment of Venom, my own creature in response to Torment of Hellfire. Atsuki Kihara can do nothing but look on in wonder as William Jensen sti stitches together a win out of nowhere. That Earthshaker Kenra, or sorry, that uh, that resilient Kenra coming yep. back out of the bin and uh, taking a creature over the top and Kihara left without anything to do other than extend his hand. Frank Carsten, what an end to the GP. Uh, I, I love the way how uh, Jensen played uh, this game. He stayed alive at two life. It was so close. Mm. Uh, and uh, he had so many key plays that he actually needed. It was the Arcfiend into the Scarab Feast. Yeah. He needed both. Just the Arcfiend itself would not have been enough. He needed the combo. He needed and then, the Scarab Feast. And then he... later on, using the, the Nest of Scarabs to create all these tokens against the Torment of Hailfire. Uh, beautiful. Just he, insane. He knew what, what was up. I mean, masterful yeah. play from William Jensen. Our, our commiserations, of course, to Atsuki Kihara because, uh, I mean, no shame in going down to a true master of the game, but this is his mm. second time as a runner-up at a GP here in, in Japan. But oh. Oh, yeah. look, that, that must sting. I mean, you know, hopefully, there you go. The, tr the trophy raised aloft here by William Huey Jensen. A back-to-back -back 